How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off The Lonesome Hunters by Tyler Crook published by Dark Horse as a thin little trade paperback and retailing for $20 US. Before we get too deep, I'm not going to be talking about the story much. I'm going to be talking about what I liked about it, some broad strokes of the general plot. Not a lot of spoilers, but I will be showing off the art just on a page-by-page -page basis. Just a lot of the book I'm going to be flipping through. So if you're worried about being visually spoiled, maybe read the book first, come back after we can talk about it. So first off, I want to say Dark Horse is getting close to um, Marvel and DC, I feel like, with the $20 trade paperback. Maybe that's not insane. Actually, you know what? I have a paperback right here. Is that insane? An image paperback. It is a volume one, and they go, you know, real cheap with their volume ones. $10. Image can afford to do it, but they're image, so who knows? Maybe that's uh, maybe that's just a special case. But 20 bucks feels like a lot for a four-issue miniseries in a paperback form. Anyway, Tyler Crook is a artist, a writer-artist now. He's an artist that I found in BPRD and Harrow County with Cullen Bunn. Um, and I adored his watercolor kind of approach to comic art. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. He often does uh, horror books like Harrow County, and I guess you could count BPRD in that as well. Um, so this is a fantasy horror book. I would say it's definitely definitely fantasy, just touches of horror here and there. Um, focusing on... Let's actually get some art first before I get too deep into this. Our main character, Howard, as a young boy, is given a sword by his father and his father's church and told to kill a demon. And we kind of move from there. We do a big time skiff after uh, the first four pages. The whole building's wiped out. The whole church is wiped out. Now he's an old man. This is his story, basically. That's the whole thing. So we had an old man with a crazy magic sword um, named Howard. And then this demon design is really cool to me. I don't know why. It's just a deer. It's just a deer. But I, it, for some reason, it is creepy. I think it's because you never see it below the, the neckline, maybe? So you, it's kind of hinting that there's something there. But it speaks, and it's always, like, drooling almost. And it is creepy, and I don't know why. I think that's something... Something about Tyler Crook's work is there's a lot of atmosphere and ambiance that I think lends itself to a horror story, regardless of what the actual content of the, of the page is. And I think that works really well in this book because there's not a ton of horror explicitly in the dialogue or the themes of the story or anything like that, but the visuals can convey a lot of dread and kind of discomfort. But he did everything here, like the first page will tell you. Script, art, and lettering, all by Tyler Crook. And I just love to read a book by a sole creator. I'm so glad he decided to strike out on his own after working with Colin Bunn a lot, I'm sure he's worked a lot of other places that I just haven't seen um, as a writer. This is, at least for me, the first time I've seen him write a story himself and draw it. And it is phenomenal. You can see a lot of watercolor texture up here in the clouds, um, on the ground as well. Obviously coloring himself too as he's painting over this. Um, he does work physically, I believe. So he actually does have, this is tangible original art, I believe, that you can get. I think I've seen a video of him making art. Or maybe it was just covers, but I highly doubt he would go physical for covers and then switch to digital for interiors. I, I think he actually has all this art. You could probably buy it. Um, it's gorgeous. The story of Howard uh, kind of coming to the rescue of a young girl named Lupe uh, who gets into kind of a situation, a magical situation, a horrific situation, and he's got to help bail her out. And it kind of, then we fall down the rabbit hole and get into a much larger world and backstory for Howard and the things he's done, the people he's connected to, maybe not people, the things he's connected to, and uh, a lot of interesting things happen. Um, magpies are a big part of this volume. It's only four-issue series. Um, it, I'm not all praised for it, though. I think there's a few things that had a few hiccups here and there. Um, Pacing-wise, this thing was short. I think it was fairly decompressed for what I felt that the scope was and what was executed. I think it is extremely short. It is nice. That decompression is nice because we get a lot of time with our characters and kind of understand them. And obviously the uh, moment-to-moment -moment transitions in the art are phenomenal. 
obviously, I guess you can probably tell, layout's fairly traditional. He does like his big panels for landscapes and reveals and things. There's the sword. The sword's so cool. The sword design is phenomenal, too. I love it. He pulls it out of this tiny red box, too, which is really cool. I can't really fit it on camera vertically, but you can see him reaching out and pulling it out. Um, it's also in the little transition page. Beautiful cover of Howard is getting his face smashed by kind of a bird-like magpie hand. The covers for this series are so good. There's the first issue. It's actually a spread in this. It's, yeah. He's just a phenomenal artist. He's just absolutely one of my favorite working artists. Uh, I say that about a lot of people, but Tyler Crook is someone that I've always been watching closely. And I waited a long time to read this book after I got it because there's a second volume out with another four-issue miniseries. Um, I knew I could read this thing really fast. I had heard it was a really quick read. And I didn't want to read it and then be left hanging for about a year. So I'm pretty sure the fourth issue of the miniseries either comes out soon or just wrapped up. And the trade will be out probably in the next couple months, I think. We've got hinting with this random character that looks to be some sort of fantasy race. Because he's got the like uh, sideways ears. Um, so there's some world building there that we don't really have a lot of info on. And um, yeah. It, it, I mean, the writing, he is... An artist first, so he was a, he was an artist first, I should say. Um, and I think this is his first time writing. I think the writing is good. I think he's got a solid story here. It's kind of a fun adventure thing with uh, kind of darker undertones and darker moments. But overall, it's fairly uplifting, I think, to see this old character and this young character kind of like come into their own together as a pair. And it's really cute. Um, and I really like the dynamic between those two. Sometimes the dialogue's a little stiff. As I said, the pacing's a little bit... Um, I guess... It just didn't work for me. I really can't... I'm not good enough of, at describing pacing to nail it down for you, but I think that there was some wasted time and we could have moved further in a story. This didn't feel like a complete story. I don't think it ever was meant to be a complete story, this first miniseries, but it really did feel almost like this is the first issue of an indie comic. This is the first issue. Uh, it's like an open, close first case that pulls you into the big story where this is just like a really contained thing that really shows you what the actual story is and we dive in and then the series ends. It honestly feels like a giant first issue, but a good one, a, a, a good, fun, engaging one with breathtaking art and awesome design. Uh, there's these like... These are actual people in here, just with magpies on their heads, but I love the the look of just, like, that's like a bird man, almost. It's another cover for issue three. I love the way he plays with light, too. It's, I mean, this is an obvious example here. But, yeah, just... So much texture. He just is, like, slinging watercolor all over the place, and it's really fun to see. Not super gore-intensive, which I like, because, I mean... I'm a horror fan. I'm not really a slasher fan. I covered Refrigerator Full of Heads last week. That's like a slasher flick in comic form, and I loved it. But normally, that's not my thing. Look at this. It's supposed to be a sky at sunset, I believe. And, yeah. I mean, he could just do, like, weird abstract splotches of color, and I'd probably read it. Um, there's the uh, bird people. The final thing I will say as a problem, tiny problem, it's a nitpick. Dialogue is very stilted when you don't use contractions. Um, he says I'm instead of I am often, but for some reason it is you are instead of your. And to me, it sounds so unnatural for to never say your, to always say you are, especially coming from a kid and stuff like that, or just casual talk. It sounds robotic and stilted to me. And it's done a lot in here, and it always pulls me out. It's really not a big deal. It's just a nitpick that I personally have. Like, not using contractions just feels weird to me, because if you read your dialogue out loud as you're writing it, I feel that you would understand that that is um, very robotic. And, and yeah, as I said, stilted. That's a nitpick, I think. He's doing a lot right as a writer. I'm sure he's got this thing plotted out a fair amount. He probably has inklings or the full idea of what he wants it to be to look like towards the end. And I'm really excited to read um, 
Volume 2, I think, is called, like, The Wolf Child or something like that. Um, I'm really excited to read it because this is quite an engaging opening to a story. I just want people to know that this is just an opening to the story. It is, it is not even all of Act 1 of a story. It is the bare bones beginning of a story. This is like the pilot episode in a four-issue miniseries contained within a trade paperback. Uh, as I said, it is a giant issue one. But a strong one, as I said, with glorious art. I really loved it. I'll stop going over and over again. Uh, if you don't uh, recognize this art, Tyler Crook's work, definitely check out Harrow County. Uh, check out his work in BPRD with um, John Arcudi. I think that's some of the best stuff. He was kind of there as James Heron and him were going back and forth on art. And that's probably the best um, era of BPRD Hell on Earth is the, is the name of the like mini or the series it's part of, but it's part of the grander series of BPRD. But his work is awesome. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff I didn't name here, but yeah, check him out. Check out this book and volume two because I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Peace.